Hello everybody, this is Bird to bring you a first person gameplay commentary. I'm going to be playing Morphling today. Uh, it's actually a replay cast, sorry. I always said that wrong. You guys might be wondering, where the, where the hell are you? Um, I'm actually on a bed in my parents' house, and you guys, you are sitting on my lap right now. How does it feel? Dreams come true, right? Um, I, the light's not very good. I don't know if you want me to do like one light or two light, but I think you can see me better, but now there's like this heavy shadow on the right side of my face, which is... Probably not the best. Um, sorry about the white noise, by the way. I know the audio quality is not the best. The downside is that I'm just using my typical headset. And I'm actually using the mic for once. Um, the reason that it, there's white noise is because a, a really basic audio setup is always going to have at least some white noise, basically. Um, so unfortunately, while I'm off in Wisconsin, where I currently am at my parents' house, um, there's going to be white noise while I make videos. So I'm just on my laptop right now, and I'm going to do my best to get you guys videos while I'm here. But unfortunately, I can't necessarily uh, have the same quality unfortunately because I can't bring all my stuff back like all my mics and things it would be too much so regardless I hope you guys enjoy I'm in Wisconsin I spent most of the day flying and I'm gonna be here for a friend's wedding until Saturday I think so I wish I was at the BTS house still aka my home but unfortunately I got stuff to do so Morphling let's talk about this hero a little bit um he is uh, used to be one of the best carries in the game arguably the best sorry about the lower quality of the game by the way i know the frames are a bit lower as is the uh, graphics quality I turned a lot of things down so it looked better but well so the frames weren't so horrible it's really annoying to watch bad frames in my opinion so i just skipped the whole bad frames thing so so yeah we're gonna be watching oh well it actually was on my player perspective already so Morphling is the hero. Uh, you guys have been asking me to play this hero for a really long time, but the problem is that I, like, never played him in Dota 1. Almost never. Almost never touched the hero. Barely touched the guy. So, didn't really have a whole lot of experience playing him, so it took a lot of games. I think he has my worst win, win ratio out of all my heroes. Prior to this game being recorded, I think it was, like, 1-8 and eight or something like that. Won one game. Lost 8, which is a huge amount of losses. Um, I'm s I still felt pretty crappy at him at many parts of this game, but um, I'm getting there. I'm getting to be vaguely okay Vaguely okay is definitely the correct word or the correct term for that. So, uh, playing with a couple friends, Merlini was in this game, two other friends, and um, Too Good, I believe, is playing yeah, the Rubik uh, support here. I know that he likes a lot. So, Morphling is a carry, really powerful powerful at TI2. The reason is because he contributes well to a tri lane. Um, he scales really well late game. He has solo killing power with the right item build. And uh, he's very, very hard to kill with the morph ability. Um, let me talk about his other skills first, and then we can talk about how cool morph is and how exactly it works. Waveform dissolves into a liquid. You surge for it's kind of like a burst of water, and it does damage, and it repositions you to that place. So it's kind of like a blink wall, so doing damage. It's pretty good. Contributes to trial lanes nicely. You can use it for farming. It's all around a great skill. Pretty mana expensive, but still very, very good skill. Uh, second skill is Adaptive Strike. This is a single target nuke. It does a lot of stun duration if your strength is higher than your uh, agility, but if your agility is higher than your strength, then it ends up doing a lot of damage in a mini stun. So it is basically another ranged nuke that you can use a solo target to try to kill heroes. His third skill is Morph, and this is his most complicated ability. Most people are very confused about this, so I'm going to try to explain this pretty clearly. Uh, basically, all heroes gain stats as they level, of course. Uh, Morph gives you some bonus stats as well, which is pretty cool. Gives you three, three, four, five, six, depending on the level of some strength and agi. But essentially, as I use Morph, I can transfer my base strength to agility, or my base agility to strength. Base meaning the first number of the two. These are the numbers I'm working with. It does. I cannot morph this plus number to anything else. Just the uh, just the first number, the 15 and the 33. The reason I grabbed up Morph at level 1 rather than Waveform is because um, Morph is now doubled in the amount of mana that it costs. It was heavily nerfed uh, since TI2. Morphling became a lot worse than he used to be. Um, he has been since slightly buffed back to what he used to be, but largely Morph is still um, very, very mana expensive. So basically, if I grab this at level 2, or when I when I basically spawn at level 1, I morph approximately 10 of my strength into Agi. Something like that. 5 five to 10. It's like somewhere in there. That way I have more last team power, basically. So I want to do that in base, because if I did it out here in the field, I would lose half of my mana, and that means that morphing later or would be problematic, or I would have less waveform. So that's why I pretty much always, always grab morph at level 1, just because it means that I'm going to have a lot more mana in the lane. So keep that in mind. I'll talk about morph a little bit more in a second, but the way my ulti works is I can make a illusion duplicate of an enemy or allied hero, and then I can control them. They take 100% damage which means that um, they're actually a very, very resistant illusion. They look, they, they basically take the same amount of damage as a regular hero does. Um, they do 50% of a hero's damage, which is pretty good. Um, and uh, I can cast 
I can spend like 150 mana, I believe, to replicate myself to them. So wherever that illusion is, I can teleport and become. It's kind of like Spectre's Haunt, except I can control the illusion individually. Um, it's really good for hero counters like um, Anti-Mage, because I could replicate an Anti-Mage, and then he can mana drain the Anti-Mage. It's uh, Morphling Anti-Mage, kind of a weird dynamic. But basically, Morphling is better than Anti-Mage in the early game, but once Anti-Mage gets a Manta style, then things start being a little one-sided, so... So that's uh, basics about Morphling. Let's talk about Morph a little bit. Largely, this is used to not die when you're about to die. If you think you're going to die, you press the F button, it automatically turns on Morph, and then all of a sudden you get a bunch of HP per second. So what happens when you transfer Agility for Strength, it's different than Tread Switching. It it's, isn't exactly the same. Tread Switching essentially gives you a percentage base shift, which means that at high levels of HP, if you Tread Switch, you're getting more HP out of the tread switching than if you're at lower HP. Because you can't just like gain 8 strength by tread switching. and that Because that would be cheap, right? Because then you could just like... You could get like a 120 HP swing or something every time you took damage if you wanted to. You can only really do that if it's at full HP. If you're at half HP, it does like a 60 HP swing, for example. If you're at a quarter HP, it only does a 30 HP swing. That's basically how it works. Morph is different in the fact that if you morph two strength, if you're if you're missing HP, like let's say I'm missing half my HP, if I morph two strength to two agi or two agility to two strength, we should have gotten this skill maybe. I I'm not like talking about this game at all, but it's really important that I talk about this stuff. I promise. If I morph two agility to two strength, that gives me a total of 19 HP times two, which is 38. So if I'm at low HP and I morph two agility to two strength, I gain 19 HP or 20 shit, 38 HP. Two strengths worth of HP. You get all of the HP. If you gain 38 HP, you can continue to do this over and over again. So basically every time you morph, which ends up being a pretty often time, 0.25 seconds at level 4. So you can basically get a total of 40 times 4, which is, of, that's of course rounding up. It's 38 times 4, but I don't want to do that math. It's basically 160 HP per second. That's your morphing. So if you're morphing, you're getting a lot of survivability per second. But the things you do lose, though, you lose armor which means physical damage will do more damage per hit late game, um, as you, or at least as you morph heavily into strength. But the bright side is that you have HP to offset that, so largely it's semi-negligible. But you can kind of kill Morphling with some, some kind of minus armor Radiant's item. It, it is a possibility. Is so, Those are your options, guys. Uh, morph is basically really good for staying alive at low HP if you have the mana, uh, but largely you want to try to keep your damage up. Um, the opposite reverse effect of that being really good about it being better than treads is that if you have low HP and you morph from um, strength, I'm sorry, and you morph from agility, strength to agility, if you're gaining agility, you end up taking a lot more damage, basically, um, because you, you're losing all that HP continuously. I did a waveform offensively here on the bottom, but I don't remember if we're going to get this guy or not. He did actually pick it up, which is pretty good here. Put quite a few extra hits on him. I did the waveform alpha the lift and I was able to pick up an Agi Treads. My last hitting right now is not very good. I don't feel very strong at Morphling again, but um, now that I have Power Treads and I have 77 damage, I'm, I'm going to be hitting okay. Um, most Usually when I play Morphling, I opt to grab a Ring of Health a little bit earlier, but uh, this game I, did, I didn't do that. I decided to just grab a Treads as fast as possible because it does actually make him a pretty good uh, damage dealer. He's, he's not as much focused on right-click as he is Waveform, um, but I, I think this is useful against bottom. He also has really, really low base movement speed, guys. Uh, if you look at his treads, this gives me plus 65, I think, or 55. So my base movement speed is like 285, which is really slow. That's like Crystal Maiden slow. Bright side is, yeah, of course, I have a position-based ability. I can essentially teleport to this location and then continue right-clicking, but point still stands. Very slow hero, so right-clicking is sometimes a bit weak. But you should keep it in mind, because he can morph so much strength to agility that it does end up always always being something of a factor, so. I really like the starting item build that I went for this game. One slipper and three ironwood branches gives, gives me plus six damage, and his animation is okay in the early game, but basically it's a bit hard to continue to get last hits, so I was pretty okay with uh, grabbing this starting item build. I think it, it was useful. Sorry, I still see some frames issues. It's probably because I'm playing Dota and I'm streaming with Xplit, which is why the re why the uh, frames aren't the best. But we're not streaming, but we're recording. Um, so yeah, I think this is the best basic skill build. You max out Waveform first, and you get a couple levels of Morph. I decided to basically get a couple hits in and then Waveform back to dodge damage, but I should have tread switched before I did that. It was a mistake. Regardless, I'm going to pick up a Ring of Health. I was given a Clarity Potion by Too Good, which is pretty nice. 
So that should give me more mana pool and more ability to use waveform. I think he's gonna deny about half my clarity there. Not the biggest loss. If we can lift him up, we should be able to get this kill. He needs to get thrown back, and we needed the uh, we needed the uh, the magic missile to come a bit earlier. So it's a little dangerous. This also also ate a uh, starfall, so that's a little scary. A lot of deaths going on in the bot lane. I think the the Luna picked up a Midas really fast, and I think she also has some items on top of that. She that was her first kill to assist, but I believe she does have a Midas if you take a look at her. Trickle Midas, pretty good stuff. So so yeah, treads into Ring of Health I think is pretty good. I think building a magic wand on Morphling is really, really necessary as well. Because you will need burst mana regen, most importantly for Morphing and also for possibly having enough for a waveform. You end up you have to be really careful with mana when you end up morphing Radiant's though because it does burn so much attack. that oftentimes you can just run out of mana pool and then you have no more escape options. Like you might need to save mana for TP scroll, you might need to save mana for a waveform. Yes, Howard, give me my last hits. Miss that one. Uh, my supports have been pulling just fine. That's been going okay. If you guys are wondering what I'm going to bring, build my Ring of Health into, um, I still kind of like building a Lincoln Sphere on Morphling. The old common build would be... You get an Ethereal Blade at some point, but... Well, the really old build wouldn't have an Ethereal Blade. It would be like Lincoln's into Manta, into Butterfly, something like that. Get a lot of agi agility items you could push, be annoying with Manta style. But most importantly, just a lot of right-clicking at some point. He's definitely a very different hero than a lot of other heroes, I would say. That's definitely the case. So, I still like Lincoln Sphere, though. They have a lot of single-target nukes that I could stop. Um, that would be, like, Frost Nova. Uh, I could stop Chain Frost, or at least one bounce of Chain Frost. I could stop the Arrow. I could stop Lucent Beam. I could stop um, Crystal Mini Frost Bite. That's, that's a lot of stuff. Um, that actually makes Lincoln's pretty useful. But largely, the main reason we're grabbing a Lincoln Sphere is because we just want a lot of stats. Since I can transfer Strength to agility, that means at any time I buy a hybrid strength and agility item, I can change the extra strength to agility, which basically means any item that gives me stats across the board is an extra agility item. It's like way better than it used to be, previously to that uh, being the case. Like, it's so nice to be able to just grab like an ultimate orb, and instead of that being a 10 strength, 10 agility, 10 int item, it's actually a 20 agility and 10 int item, because I can, assuming I have enough strength base, I can actually rotate that over. So, really nice thing about Morphling is you want to grab items that give you a lot of stats across the board. So, so items that do that are Lincoln Talk Sphere, Manta Style, Scotty is really good in the late game as well. Um, there are other items. Uh, Butterfly is great, of course, because it's Agi items. He's an Agi hero, but Dyer's largely um, items that just give stats across the board are exactly what Morphling needs. Uh, I should have gotten that last tip. So, I decided to buy my Magic Wand because I want some item slots, and the item is fantastic, obviously. For survivability. I already have all the stats that it gives me, but I'm okay picking up some more. Just considering doing some uh, some major harass on this guy. Just a couple right clicks, but every hit is pretty serious at this point since I do have so much agi swapped. Um, the amount that I usually uh, shift my strength and agi, by the way, is um, in the late game situations I want at least 1200 HP, pretty much in all cases. If I do that, then I'm a lot safer towards damage. Or at least I have much less threat of being bursted down, essentially. Uh, but other than the 1200 HP, in the early game I just I just generally try to feel safe. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but you can always tread switch to strength treads and then strength morph really fast if you're, if you're really worried about dying. Definitely ate that arrow. And I start strength morph morphing already. I should have waveformed aggressively there. I didn't realize that Rubik was here. That was a big mistake for me. I'm also pretty low on mana now, which is not good. Let's see if this guy stays. Fortunately, I could have blocked that guy in there. I think that would have been good. Rubik ends up dying anyways, and uh, that's too unfortunate for me. I did have to do some morphing there. Um, again, I. One thing that I think is maybe a little unfair about Morphling is you can start Morphing while you're already stunned. Like, you can initiate the Morph after you're stunned, which makes it really hard for him to get killed. I did it there. I ate the arrow, and then I started Morphing, so I was like, oh crap, there's a Lich here as well. This is obviously really bad. So I'm going to run back to base. Um, there are some tricks you can do to save time doing this. Morphling really does need to be very, very efficient with his farm time. I think um, that's mostly because 
The hero doesn't have as many innate fast farming abilities as some others, like Anti-Mage for example, when he grabs a Battle Fury, that guy farms insanely fast. Watch me morph here, I'm going to start morphing into Agility. Um, I was all morphed into Strength there, so I'm going to morph down. As you can see, I'm losing HP at, an, at the same amount that I was uh, gaining it when I do morph. So you do have to use a fount usually to heal back up a bit faster. I'm going to TP back up to the top lane because I want to get some CS. I maybe could go contest some of the bot lane, but it'd be a little scary because I have waveform, but that's pretty much all I'm working with for damage. My my right click is okay, but it's not anything else to to freak out about at all. So got about a thousand gold in the bank now. Could finish my perseverance, but generally I want to get as many stats as fast as possible, just because of the fact that. Um, Survivability, more damage, all that stuff. The mana regen's really good, honestly. Very, very good, but it's not Dyer's completely necessary in this case. So level 9, I'll pick up my ulti. With my ulti, I can then start doing tricks for farming, uh, saving time farming. What I would basically do, for example, if I um, just wanted to pick up a couple CS here and do some damage to this guy. Um, what you can basically do, if you ever want to go back to base, you can make a replicant of your ally. You can teleport back to base, and once you're full healed, you can teleport back to where you just were. It's really good for increasing your farming speeds and basically reducing downtime between base trips. Ideally, as a carry, you never want to go to a base trip anyways, but luckily for Morphling, he has, uh, he has methods to do so. <sighs> Sorry about the yawning. Um, I didn't actually go to sleep last night. I just slept on airplanes all day, so I'm not feeling the best. Will you... hopefully you guys understand. I missed that last hit someone. And that one. Will I miss everyone? Nope. Only a little bad guys, come on. Alright, so level 9 I'll pick up my ulti. It's really, really inexpensive to actually make the ulti initially. Um, but to teleport to it, it becomes expensive, basically. Lasts for a pretty large amount of time, and that scales depending on what level it is. Cast range ends up changing a lot as well. I have 1600 gold. Again, I could make the Void Stone. There's a lot of action going on in the mid lane, which is why I'm now pushing. It's because I want to be able to at least get some gold out of uh, my opponent's pushing. It's going to be a TP from a Puck. I'm going to Tread Switch because I do not want to die. And I just waveform through the Dream Coil. It ends up not stunning me because while you're waveforming, you're invisible. But I force two TPs, which not only prevents our Tier 2 tower from being pressured, but it also cost them, what, 270 gold they just spent trying to kill me? Absolutely wasted. Well, alright, they got my mana drained. I ended up waveforming, so I, I lost mana there. And his orb also hit me, so I took a little damage. But wasting Dream Coil and two TPs like that is completely worth it for me. So, again, downside, no mana regen right now, but that's alright. Some other times that I play as Morphling, I like getting a Ring of Aquila. Uh, the downside of grabbing a Ring, Ring of Aquila, though, is it's really expensive. It's, it's a thousand gold, and that really is a significant amount in the early game. Um, this game I just held onto a slipper for a really long time, but um, generally it's a good—it's a really good pickup to grab a, a ring of Aquila on Morphling just to get his his base mana regen up a lot. middle tower. And the creeps again. Continue dying. I want to auto attack this because I want to be able to take the tower. Tower. I know that the glyph is down. So that means I should be able to get the last hit here. Unless I just auto attack Radiant's through and miss it. I mean, it happens sometimes, guys. Uh, Puck ends up picking up a Dagon. It's a little Dyer's greedy from him. Um, I think what he was probably planning on was that I was going to make an Ethereal Blade, and he wanted to predict that. The reason Dagon's so good against Morphling is because uh, you guys saw it in my Lion game, the last one I uploaded. There was one point where the Dagon used an Ethereal Blade, and then I Finger of Death him and just one shot him. That's because he was fully morphed into agility Radiant's for maximum damage, and I hit him and it did like 50, it does bonus damage as well. So there we go, I pick up an ultimate orb, I feel like my HP is a bit too high now, so I might end up morphing some of it over, we'll see. Really needs to be able to pick a lot of people off here. See if I can kill any of these guys, I was definitely considering it. There are two dead heroes, I think I might have been able to go for it, but it would have been a little scary. I, my mana is a bit too low to probably, to probably test it. And again, my CS is still pretty low as well, but I'll get better at last sitting with them as time goes on. So now I'll probably just do a lot of right-clicking in the jungle. Again, my agility is pretty solid. I've got a ring of regen, so I do have some passive HP regen. My armor is not bad either. Uh, my armor is not bad either. <laughs> no way, guys. We're losing... 
If you guys are a little unsure about where this game is going right now, we can take a look at the scoreboard. That is a 9-1-3 and three Luna with a Hannah Midas. I decided I was going to have to TP for this one, because otherwise she would die. So that's going to stay her alive, keep her, or keep her alive. Again, I keep saying the completely wrong words because I'm tired, and I'm sorry about that. It's a 4,000 gold advantage, Luna has a freaking ethereal blade at like 15 minutes, which is insane, because she can use this and then loosen beam, it's really cool. Try it out sometimes, guys. Bonus for us is that um, her survivability won't be very high in the early game, so... Can maybe do Radiant make something happen with this. Is under I should have some more kills from lane, but as a whole, I've been playing just okay. Oh my god! Oh, I remember this moment. Oh, I was really mad. Okay, so basically, what happened was he eclipsed. I was like, okay, he eclipsed. Uh, that's weird. And I was gonna wait for him and morph. I think I started morphing, but then I took like one lucent beam. And I was about to waveform. And then he loosened beam me the actual one, which mini stuns. So he mini stunned me right before I used waveform, and the next two hits killed me. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I just died like that. Because he missed like the first two loosened beams just completely whiffed. They completely whiffed, and I was like, there's no way. This is not going to kill me, and then it killed me, and I was really sad. So That was a really big team pick for them. I'm going to respawn at least. Rilini is hitting really hard right now. I maybe could have TP to the top lane to contest that, but it looked a little scary. I mean, a solo puck in that big of a creep wave is not something I, I want to deal with, essentially. I could have waveformed it and gone for the CS, but it's, it's really a, a bit iffy. And besides, I can still come to the top lane. It's going to continue pushing, and I'll be able to grab the CS. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Creep wave is gonna be deadish. Oops, should hit an extra time. There's a lot of heroes in our jungle, Dyer's actually. Who is that? It's Puck and Crystal Maiden. Uh, Puck's silence is actually pretty scary because if he does silence me, it prevents me from morphing. Here comes Sienna. though. I will start the more. The waveform past him. Puck is Puck is crazy. It's gonna be a dead Crystal Maiden. <laughs> Uh, ulti was so good. That's why Shadow Blade is really good, guys, if people don't get detection. It's really good if they don't get detection. So you get to do fun stuff like that. So, nice double kill from him. I'm going to be able to buy my Void Stone now, which I can't wait to have because my mana pool is still a bit low. Again, shaving some of the cheap items off of your item builds as a hard carry like Morphling, who has like a really important item, is often very important. Is very, very crucial at times. And what I mean by an important item, we can talk about a lot of carries like, um, I don't know. Faces Void doesn't necessarily have a super important item. You could talk about Battle Fury, but like, having a Battle Fury, not having a Battle Fury doesn't like completely change the game. An item that completely changes a hero though is Ethereal Blade or Black King Bar. Some heroes need to have Black King Bar to be really, really useful in a team fight. Morphling kind of really needs Ethereal Blade to be able to start doing tricky things like solo killing. So if I shave a thousand gold off of a ring of, with, by not getting a ring of Aquila and I play effectively enough to have enough mana then it gets my ring of or it gives my eth Ethereal Blade one minute earlier and that might be the difference between me uh, winning a fight or getting a kill or not. You know, Because that could be one extra item in a, in a team fight that's one earlier. It's, it just makes a big difference if you can shave off that extra time. So not picking up the Aqua here, I don't think it was the wrong choice. My Lincolns is a moderately late here um, at 21 minutes. I'm actually not even there yet. I'm still like 600 away. But I'm going to send a Windrunner Illusion back just in case things go bad so I can get out. But So that sucked. Not a good team fight. So I'm prepared for my Lincoln's buy in 600 gold. Got hit by Chain Frost again. We are now at a solid 10,000 gold disadvantage. EXP jumped down a lot from those kills though. Those kills helped a whole bunch. Comes another ulti again. They don't have sentry wards. was able to break himself, and we got him. Really close. 
that like they're so far ahead, they shouldn't be losing. Like they should not be losing those team fights. But literally, they they're losing this game or losing this fight now because they didn't have a sentry. If they had a sentry, they would have seen Merlini go for the ulti. But luckily for him, he was able to put an ulti down like four heroes, and I got away from him off off on all of them as well. Despite them mecking, it just wasn't enough damage. So. I finished my Lincoln Sphere as a result, and I've got 700 gold on top of that, which is a huge pickup for me. I was unable to get like a triple kill there, but just being there for the waveform while he did his ulti just really helped things out a lot. And now that I have Lincolns, I can even shift my um, my strength up even lower because I now have a spell block, which ideally is at least like 300 damage, right? Like it's going to block Chain Frost or Pulse or Lucent Beam or something. Um, it's a lot of extra a lot of extra survivability basically so i can move my um, edgy a little higher as a, as a result i've got 33 in the bank right now and 1200 which is arguably to be a little high maybe who knows but uh, and again waveforming for cs i'm getting five mana per second now as well based on waveform it's kind of nice to push the waves out like that sometimes though because i want to push the wave and then i want to take neutrals then i want to push the wave again if i just like slowly last it consistently then i only get late uh, wave farm so it's sometimes good to do a mix of both and right here, it might be better to actually sit in lane and take CS, but I really like killing Mud Golems because I hate them. Merlini, of course, continues to snowball out of control. And I've got 1600 gold now, so I can go a lot of different ways with my item build purchases. I've played a decent amount of Morphling games now, and I've tried a lot of different builds. I've tried super standard build without go without uh, Shotgun. Shotgun is the Ethereal Blade really good build though he looked really dead so I was like I'm not even gonna start walking really glad I didn't even start walking because I would have not accomplished anything and I would have just wasted my time um, I think this is probably my favorite build at the moment treads wand Lincoln's and then build into a uh, goat or ethereal blade I think that's the best way to go ethereal blades pretty needed just because you have to be able to start solo killing. Like, if you can't solo kill heroes, then Morphling becomes a lot harder to be effective. It's great in all the, like, waveform him and, and pop Manta and, like, right-click somebody for some decent damage, but it's way different to be able to just drop somebody from the fight and make it a 5v4. So, looks like... I'm actually way late for this fight, by the way. Great shackle, though, by the Windrunner. Secures this that kill. I have no idea where I am. Oh, I teleported back there. My adaptive strike did, like, 230 there. And I was actually able to help kill the the puck there, which I was surprised surprised about. Honestly, it went okay considering I was extremely late and um, killed the Luna because she got shackled, and then we killed the puck as well. I used the adaptive to mini stun and get extra tower hits in, so it worked out well. Um, normally, I would pick up my Ghost Scepter at this point, especially against hard carries like Anti Mage or something like that, but. Um, since they're almost all magic nukers, I didn't even want to touch a Ghost Scepter in the early game. It's just not something that would have been safe. That was a little weird. Thanks, Marana. Yeah. Definitely, he definitely left him out to dry. The reason um, he popped that was because uh, I think they used Frostbite and the first Lucent Beam, so he knew he could channel an ulti off. And then the CM just kind of stood next to him, so it wasn't that hard. Um, I'm going to use this Replicant Illusion to tank. If you guys don't know how to do this, you select your illusions, you pass the letter M, which is the move command, and then you left click on who you want them to move to. See, when you, an illusion attacks Roshan, they just die because it would be too cheap. Like, PL could uh, solo Roshan very, very easily. I let the Shadow Fiend take the Aegis, of course, because he's snowballing harder than I am right now, and I'm a lot more survivable. Again, I'm going to level up and shift a bit more agi. We're going to see Windrunner get killed uh, with an EB nuke combo. I don't even know if that guy has boots or not. He's playing pretty far behind. That is a DD. I think he has a butterfly, actually. We were really sad we didn't get that kill. We're like, my kills. Cool, of course, jump on us. It's a good steal from Too Good. Apparently my adaptive strike removes telekinesis, which I did not know. Who knew, guys? You guys tell I'm really tired right now. I'm so tired right now. <laughs> it's like 9. It's like 10 o'clock or something. It's like 8 o'clock, California. Might be able to fix my sleep schedule. That'd be pretty fun. So fun. 
Alright, so I grabbed an Eagle Song because I want to make an Ethereal Blade and I didn't really want to get the Ghost Scepter first. Increasing my damage by 25, increasing my attack speed by 25, and that's an extra 25 agility that I'll go towards Adaptive Strike as well. So all around great item. And there it is, we get the tower. Too good gets the last hit, but that's fine with me because I still got my EB. And now I get to start playing more fling the way he's meant to be played, which is basically just killing people. I'm still not the best at it, but I'm okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna go for the really squishy heroes that are preferably free kills. Crystal Mane is a good example, Lich is a good example, Potom is doable, but she can leap, so it's pretty easy for her to escape. But basically the combo will be you use Ethereal Blade that slows them and makes them ethereal, you use Adaptive Strike to mini stun them, and while they're mini stunned, you'll waveform through them and hopefully score kills. So I'll just move this down and get ready to set things up. That's gonna be Lich, and there you go, easy combo. So I kill him without too much trouble. It's only one hero, but every hero that you kill with it is a big snowball, because it's like a guaranteed kill every time that you have the mana and the nukes. And it looks like he's going to fight us. I'm morphing strength a little bit, because I'm worried. But without without a BKB or anything, it's just really easy to kill him. I was like still strength morphing here, but a mistake. Burns me a lot of mana here. I'm gonna make an illusion, send into the jungle. I think the um oh yeah, we have somebody farming top, Shadow Fiend goes to farm top. I could Dyer's use the illusion to push to bottom or something like that. Or get into position mid. I, I didn't use this guy very efficiently, this uh this illusion. The Shadow Fiend illusion, I believe. Probably should have positioned it mid since there's a, there is a creep wave pushing there. That I think that would have been pretty good. Uh, my HP is way too high right now, by the way. But it's it's basically because uh, I have, I don't have enough mana. So I should have grabbed this invis actually and looked for a kill. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. I really do need to play this hero more. I think he's really fun, but um, I just need to play him more. Was it thirty? It's one hundred and fifty mana. It's actually quite a bit to cast. But another thing people use the um, the replicant for is looking for kills in the jungle. So what I could do, for example, I'm going to teleport to my replicant in a second here, but you'll see. So I'll teleport to the Shadow Fiend illusion, which I had been moving down there using hotkeys. Um, what you can do is you can take a replicant, you can run it through the enemy jungle, and if you see any free kills, you can just teleport in and do the combo. Most heroes can evade it. Uh, Crystal Mater, for example, she can't stop it. There's like no way. If I get within range of an EB, I can EB and adaptive and waveform and she will die every time. At this point in the game, at least, when she's when they're behind. Um, I want to go for a Yasha next because I want to increase my um, right click potential and also my overall agility and damage. So I pick up a Blade of Alacrity, this will be a Yasha once I farm a bit more. As you can see, my 1200 HP range is usually where I feel comfortable personally, so I'm going to aim for that again. I do like the Manta though, I think it's a good build. I really like the Lincolns into Ethereal Blade though. Um, let me talk about uh, that item progression. I, t I talked to especially about the fact that um, shaving off an Aqua gets you your EB faster. Some players do like rushing EB first. I don't necessarily agree with this. Some players like it. Um, for pubs, it doesn't matter that much, honestly. You can kind of do whatever you want, but if you grab an Ethereal Blade first, without having a Lincolns, you're missing mana regen, so that means doing a combo is going to burn you from mana pretty fast. Um, you also might not even be level 16, or more importantly, 14. If you're level 14, for example, Adaptive Strike will be maxed out. So if Adaptive Strike isn't even maxed out, then using Ethereal Blade EB is not even that good. Like, it's, it's difficult to get the combo off, essentially, because... Or you can do the combo, but it won't do that much damage because your adaptive strike won't be maxed out. So there is some argument to say you might as well build some other item before you make EB, something that's going to keep you alive and help you stay alive and help you contribute, which Lincoln's does do. You can morph the strength to agility, so it's like a 30 agility item with a 15 int item with all this regen that you need. Um, I, th I just think Lincoln's really good. And look how pretty it is. Like, it's blue, it's all, like, shiny. I, why would you not build that? Come on. So anyways, I, I really like the interaction between Lincoln's and EB. Um, it makes you a bit of a glass cannon to have EB anyways, Lincolns can block that, it gives you mana regen to spend on EBs, all that good stuff. So I'm going to send the illusion somewhere else, uh, I don't remember if I scouted with this or what I did with it, but I sent it somewhere else. Um, here comes the Yasha, so now my movement speed is even better, it's now 425 with smoke, which is weird. But I should be EB nuking this guy. Yep. So we end up picking up the, the Luna really easily here. This is basically a symptom of the of the Luna not having a BKB. She just can't get one in time. Like, yeah, we did smoke there, so maybe it would have maybe she would have died either way. But I'll take a look at her items after the tower dies. This is what she built: tranquil boots. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to watch me play, I guess, for now. I'll talk about our items later, but my GLD is pretty heavy right now, so I'm going to do a slight strength morph and it quite feel safe here. That is a dead puck. I have a combo ready to go. Could go on that CM, I think. I have too much trouble. Whole thinking free HP thing is. There it is. Kill got stolen, guys. Go for it on the bottom one. They kill her. Nice, got her. So, guys, things are looking okay. From here, we should be able to snowball for the end of the game. We took a second racks. I've got Mantis down now. So, now I have more tower pushing. And again, I'm going to do some more morphing. So, my HP is too, too damn high. Need more damage. All the illusions hit pretty hard. They, they only hit for 20% as a typical illusion. But keep in mind, guys, that my base damage is really high. It is, like, really high. Again, Luna can't even fight me without a BKB. She can't do it. And at this point, it doesn't even, we don't even need Shadow Fiend to win because I'm quite farmed. Um, this primary dam damage attribute, 261, this is all based on agility, which means that my illusions hit for my agility number, not the bonus damage. So that's another really good reason to get a Manta style. It makes your illusions are really strong on this hero. So they'll do like what 28% of that is essentially 30 or 10% times 3, so like 26. They're basically hitting for like 75, which is pretty good. That's a pretty sick chain boss. So yeah, um, Morphling all around great hero. I really recommend this build. Uh, Treads, Wand into Lincolns into Ethereal Blade. Some people like to skip Lincolns and get a bottle early, but I feel like you, it kind of requires runes and um, also. Bottle Crane isn't as viable as it used to be, so it's a little tough to do that. But I really like this build. I had fun playing this game, and uh, I'm definitely going to try to play Morphling a bit more. This was this game was largely Morphling carrying us, or not Morphling, Merlini carrying us. It's kind of like uh, Merlini instead of Blitz, for example, but I don't know why this is lagging so much. Sorry, guys. Um, but I hope everything turns out on the recording. But yeah, Merlini obviously did a great job. He basically countered the feed that happened early game. There was a lot of feeding going on, and luckily we were able to win team fights. and because Luna never grabbed BKB, she was about to build it. I saw that she had an Ogre Club and a Mythical Hammer. She was going to build a BKB, but she was very close. If she did finish that, she pr she could have fought me, definitely. But when I have the Shotgun ability, and I can burn like 90% of his HP with a simple combo, and then wait out the uh, the Ghost Scepter and just right-click the guy, like it's really easy for me to win that fight. So Pretty fun. That's Morphling. I hope I explained Morph properly. Um, I hope I explained his skill build properly, his items. I, I, I've tried going without Ethereal Blade, but I honestly think it's necessary. Every game that I've played Morphling, I like I don't snowball that hard because I'm not perfect at the hero or close to perfect at the hero, but I really think that Ghost Scepter um, into Ethereal Blade or Eagle Song into Ethereal Blade is the way to go. Like It gives you so much solo killing potential that you can snowball with it. I mean, think about every time you kill a hero. If you kill a hero, what happens? Oh, bam, I killed the hero, now it's a 5v4, should allow you to push, you can take tactical advantage. If you can't kill people for free, then things get a lot harder, so... That's Morphling. Thanks everyone for watching. Sorry the thumbnail sucks. I'm going to be done. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to sleep like 10 hours. It's going to be great. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I appreciate it. Uh, make sure you guys watch the Alienware Cup that's going on right now. I'm unfortunately not at the BTS house since I'm at home, but or at my parents' home. But uh, I'll be catching you guys soon, hopefully playing some Dota games while I have free time. And I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.